Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of General Conference Conversations, a podcast where we have conversations about General Conference. I'm your host, Kaylin, and I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. This is actually, you're going to get a bit of behind the scenes. It's my second time recording this episode because I was a bit of an idiot earlier, (laughs) and I uh, recorded about 15 minutes and then my phone ran out of storage and so so another behind the scenes i record these as videos and then use the audio to make the actual video anyway so it was like oh you need to change your storage or you need to um you don't have enough storage in your phone and so i was like okay i've done this before i do this all the time like i take a lot of pictures for my job and so i forget to clean them out and I do these episodes, right? They're 20 minute episodes and so they take up a lot of room. All I need to do is go in and I delete a, like my past episodes that I've now uploaded to my computer that I forgot to delete. I delete them and then I go into the trash on my phone and delete them completely permanently off my phone, right? Because that's what actually takes up your storage. It can also take up storage in your trash just for future reference. And it dumps every 30 days or whatever, but whatever. But then I made the mistake of also deleting the video that I had just taken. So, uh, like permanently deleted off my phone. Didn't even have enough time to, you know, upload to Google Photos, be backed up onto the cloud, nothing. So I had nothing. So I lost 15 minutes of audio that I'm going to redo for you. And let's see if it's any better. Maybe the spirit wanted me to say something different. I don't know. Anyway, so today we are talking about Brother Nelson's talk in support of the rising generation. And these ones, I think I've said this before, these episodes, these talks are sometimes hard for me to like make episodes about because they're talking to a specific group of people right often it's like oh we're, we're speaking to, i'm speaking to the missionaries today or i'm speaking to the youth at the church today or i'm speaking to like there was that one from was it last conference the conference before he was speaking to like senior couples who were thinking about going on a mission like that's a very specific group of people right and so then when i'm going back and rereading these and i'm like one i'm not always in the target audience and so like what am i getting out of this and also like how am i going to relate this to my audience who are not all senior couples looking to go on a mission (laughs) right um but here's this the the quick summary of his talk so he does talk about obviously the youth he's talking about the rising generation and how important they are and how important it is to have good relationships with and support the youth and so like this is a broader context right it's not just i'm not just talking to the youth i'm not just talking to leaders of youth i'm talking to anyone who has interactions with youth (laughs) with the next generation youth and children that's pretty much everybody um so there's that but also i found that a lot of what he says can also apply to other callings and other relationships in our lives and so um that's what i'm gonna focus on i am going to plug very quickly he talks about i don't think he says it specifically uh, i don't know i don't remember if he talks about it like actually verbatim about the children and youth program but he does say this we express our confidence in the youth by offering support and direction without taking over as we step back and allow the youth to learn through counseling together choosing an inspired course and putting their plan to action they will experience true joy and growth and of course this whole episode this whole my goodness this whole talk (laughs) had me thinking about the children youth program and i am too old for the children youth program it was rolled out when i was on my mission so i was no longer in the youth program anymore 
which made me very sad because I think it is an absolutely brilliant program. I remember I was on my mission when they rolled it out and we went over to one of the bishop's houses in the area that I was serving in to watch the broadcast where they introduced it all and explained it all, right? And I remember listening to it and being like, this is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I think it's amazing. And so I grew up with personal progress, right? And um, <clears throat> it's similar. It's not. It's a similar goal, right? We have the goal of trying to encourage our youth to better themselves spiritually, to have a relationship with Christ, to have a belief in Christ. And so personal progress did that with values. You have faith, divine nature, individual worth, da 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 And there were little activities. You learn about the value and what it meant and what it sh- how you should like have that in your life. And then there was a-, a list of activities that you could choose from. And then one big activity at the end. So there was like, I don't remember exactly, it's been so long, but like you would choose three of the ten and then you do one big activity to like show that you understood that value and often it was reading scriptures about faith or writing in your journal about faith um trying to implement your life in your life and then writing about it in your journal or telling a leader or a parent about it to kind of show that you understood what faith meant and there are bigger things like you do big service projects that you would organize or reading the book of mormon from beginning to end or <clears throat> memorizing the living christ and all of that was meant to help you to kind of understand these values more implement them in your life learn to live the gospel right so the children youth program has kind of the same goal but they've also incorporated <laughs> all of these others so there's four categories spiritual intellectual social and physical it's these four groupings and you go through these four things and you make goals that are in those four categories so you think about physical what's a goal physically that i want to be better at do i want to be more consistent in brushing my teeth for a little kid right um or for me i'm not i'm not consistent at brushing my teeth either Um, Do I want to be better at eating healthier? Do I want to make the varsity volleyball team this year, right? What can I do? What goals and steps can I take to get to that point, right? So you make a goal and then it goes through like making steps to hit that goal and then like benchmarks that you then look back and see how you're doing on that goal. And then you're supposed to check in with your parents and your leaders at church. And the biggest part is that you're supposed to incorporate personal revelation into this. You're supposed to come and like go before God and pray and say, you know, what should I do better? Like, how, what can I do better in a physical sense? And how can I get there? And so you really incorporate personal revelation in making the goals and making the plans to hit the goals. And then you're enlisting learning how to enlist divine help in hitting those goals and actually doing it right and then that translates over to what brother nelson is saying here right is like then your youth are in charge of planning activities based on their goals which i thought was so brilliant you know how hard it is to plan four activities a month that is 48 activities in a year (laughs) like that's so many things 48 different activities do you know how hard that is (laughs) like you end up kind of repeating yourself and that's fine but if you have a kid who's like i want to learn how to bake a cake what do you do on wednesday night you go in and you make a cake and everybody helps and at the end they're like i learned how to bake a cake goal check right i want to be like i want to try rock climbing as my physical goal i want to i want to try it you go rock climbing as a group right like i want to be better like in your social life right i'm better at talking to people you do an activity where you ask people questions and you learn how to have conversations with people i think it's absolutely brilliant 
Um, and so, and then that ends up that the, like, the youth are in charge. They teach, they counsel, they are the presidents of these classes, right? And I remember my bishop that I was serving with when we went over to his house and afterwards I was like, this is amazing, I love it. And he was like, I love it too. I can see it being hard for the youth leaders to kind of let go and let the youth be in charge. And also on the flip side, I would add to that, encouraging them to be in charge, right? Sometimes it's not that you're letting them, but like they don't wanna, or they don't they don't come to activities because of because they don't want to, or because they have other extracurricular activities they're not that have happens on Tuesday nights and they can't come, right? Um, it can be hard to not only let the youth do it, but encourage the youth to do it because then nothing gets done. And so, but um, his whole point here, right, is that as we step back and allow the youth to learn and counsel together, then they will experience joy and growth because they're doing it. They're making those steps themselves. And that's, I think, part of why this has come around now is Elder or President Nelson's whole thing about like, hear him and have your own testimony, come follow me, ministering, all these things, all these changes that he's made to not the gospel, but the way that we live it. Um, like we're still studying the same books at church, right? But we're encouraged to study them. We were always encouraged, I should say that. We were always encouraged to um, read the lesson before we came to Sunday school now. But now we're all studying the same thing and it's supposed to be home-based, church-supported. And so, and then ministering, like, it's the same thing. You're still assigned to somebody who you kind of try and look after, but you're supposed to seek your own personal revelation on how you're supposed to minister to this person. And so it's the same thing here. Like, the the intent is still the same. It's to help the children and youth understand the gospel better and live it and see it work in their lives. Um but with the like but they're but they are making their program based on their interests and their um goals they don't have to choose from they don't have a limited oh choose three of the ten they are making those goals and and trying to achieve them and then in the process like seeking that personal revelation and learning how to seek that personal revelation and learning how god speaks to them so that's just my plug for the children and youth program. Um, I think it's sad. It kind of got waylaid by COVID. Uh, they announced it in like November 2019. They rolled it out in January of 2020. And then of course, two and a half months later, everything shut down. And so it didn't really ever get to be put fully into practice. Like on the um, complete, like Come Follow Me had been around for what, two years at that point? And so we had kind of gotten used to it. And so even without church, we were used to doing Come Follow Me. And so a lot of people had their own churches at tr- church at home using the Come Follow Me guide. Um, but I just didn't have enough time to get traction for the youth and parents to really understand the program and like remember that the program exists. So I hope that it will continue to have traction and be able to like be implemented more. And so if that's something that you're a parent or you're a youth leader or you're just someone in the ward who's like loves it as well. It's also for primary kids too. Like I should say that it's not just for the youth. It's also for primary kids. And so highly encourage looking at it. They've incorporated it into the new Preach My Gospel. Like it's sticking around and I think it's a fantastic program. So anyway. But to go back to what I was saying earlier, um, a lot of what he says in here also pertains and can pertain to um, other relationships, um, not just like parent and youth or leader and youth, but with like other kids, with your spouse, with um, friends, um, and in other callings as well. And he talks a lot about Helaman. Um, 
a good portion is him talking about Helaman in this one. He says, Helaman numbered the young men in his care. He prioritized building strong relationships with them. And that first line like stuck out at me. I was like, ugh, numbered. I really hate that phrase or that it's not even a phrase. It's just like a word. But I thought this before of like numbers have a negative connotation for me. Um, on my mission, all of our goals were about numbers. Right? It was how many people can you get baptized this month? And how many people can you get to church on Sunday? And how many people can you find this 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 week? And it felt really so numbers heavy. Um, and as we'll talk about in my next episode, is all about choices and agency. It always felt like those number goals were based on other people's agency, right? Like I can't control how many people will come to church on Sunday. I can control how many people I invite, right? And so <clears throat> I think they've kind of gone away from those kinds of goals, but I like have this really like hate relationship with numbers. And so I don't make number goals because it really, really messes with my brain when I don't hit that number, right? You feel really crappy. You're like, oh, I'm gonna read my scriptures three days a week and then you only do it too and you're like man i failed right with instead of saying um like oh i read two days this week and that's one more than last week right but we fixate on that but i didn't hit the three and so i make goals going back to goals <laughs> i make goals that are very much like I want to implement something new in my scripture study. So instead of just reading, I'm gonna click on the footnotes or I'm going to search for, or like be on the lookout for a word or whatever, right? And so that helps me, that's something different. But numbers, <laughs> I really don't like this. And it's used quite a bit in the scriptures. Like it says that Christ numbered his sheep, right? And it can feel kind of, like clinical and not per like impersonal right when you think about being numbered like i'm assigned a number and in a lot of things we are assigned a number right like we're given a social security number if you're in the states a social insurance number if you're in canada i don't know about what they're called in other countries but i know those two because i have them but like you're literally given a number and for a lot of things, right? Like our passports are given numbers, our driver's licenses are given numbers, and it's a way for like people to keep track of us. But it can feel very impersonal and like, oh, I'm just a number to you, right? I'm just a number, I'm just a number on a page, you don't care about who I am, what my story is, things like that, right? Um, but then you think about it a step further, right? the person that you give your passport to at the airport probably doesn't care they're looking at your passport number they're looking to make sure that you your face matches your face on your passport and that you know your birthday matches the birthday right but like the government this is probably gonna sound weird <laughs> like they are trying to keep track of you they're trying to keep track of who you are and where you go what your credit score is that can also feel very impersonal but like there is a deeper meaning behind that and it's same thing with like christ numbering his sheep or like numbering in a gospel sense is very personal he numbered his sheep and it wasn't just that he was counting them each sheep had a number so if 97 went missing he knew what sheep it was and who was missing and why and like he went to go and find them right and so Helaman numbered the young men in his care he knew every single one of them and it made me think about i was thinking about this the other day with my husband i was telling him the story too when i was in girls camp i think it was my first year the theme was gospel boot camp so all four levels were given a branch of the U.S. military. It's kind of cringy, but it's fine. And our YCLs uh, for our level numbered us off, and then we would do roll call. So every time we would like get to lunch and we wanted to make sure our entire group of girls was there, our, our YCL would yell sound off. 
and then we'd count through the numbers. And it wasn't just that like the first person had one and then it went down the line. Every single one of us was assigned a number. And so then if we knew that 19 was gone, like we'd get to 19 and nobody yelled 19. Oh, who's 19? Oh, she's in the bathroom. That's so-and-so, she's in the bathroom. And so then it was a way to keep track of everybody and to know that they like that they were missing. And so, and then of course that's exactly what he says in this next this next uh, sentence. He says he prioritized building strong relationships with them. He numbered the young man in his care. He prioritized building strong relationships. And so that changes that connotation of numbered so quickly, right? That's completely opposite of how I think about it is he prioritized knowing them so deeply that he could number them. He could touch them and know who they were. And I'm very passionate about this. I'm very passionate about building relationships with people and and not just for the purpose of the gospel, right? Not just to like be a missionary or for like the end goal of, um, of like converting someone but also just because i love learning about people and i love having genuine conversations about their lives i hate small talk it like grates on me i have to like grit my teeth and like grin and bear it until we get to like more interesting topics of conversation i understand the functionality of it absolutely like i get it but it really is hard for me to get through small talk and but I think this is really important. This is important in our jobs, in our friendships, like having genuine connections with people, not just in a passing like, oh, hey, yeah, I lurk in the same cubicle as you or we pass each other in the elevator. Um, it's it's hard for me to do that. I It takes a long time for me to like be comfortable with someone and to warm up to someone. So I'm not saying it's easy, absolutely not. Um, and it can really suck when you like get really close to someone and then like they move or they get a different job and you don't see them very often or whatever it may be, right? But it's important. It's important to have these deep connections. And so on a gospel sense, right? Like he's talking about having these com- these relationships with the youth. Um, so you're a little bit more than just, oh, she's my young woman's leader. She's like, oh, she's my young leader, woman's leader. And she listens so well. Like, I trust her. I'm going to tell her everything. I want her advice. I, w- I want to go to her. Like, my best friend, she has one of her young woman's leaders that she raves about to this day. She's like, I know that if I called her up right now, she would say, yeah, come over. I'm making cookies. I want to hear about it. And she's like, and I've done that before. Like I've called her up and been like, sister so-and-so, I'm having a really crappy day. Can I come talk? And she's like, I was not her young woman. I had not been, she had not been my young woman leader for like five or six years. And she said, yeah, absolutely come over and talked for two hours. Like that is a, that is a relationship. And then like, you actually know that they care, right? It's hard. It was hard. So I was the young woman's secretary. And part of it was that it was I was the secretary, and so it was weird. I didn't know what my role was, but also like I was in this weird limbo, and it was just interesting to be young woman secretary. But like, there's a difference, right? Of like, oh yeah, she's like young my young woman's leader. I don't know if she really cares, and then I'm gonna give you a lesson about the gospel, but I don't like know you well enough to be like oh yeah i'd remember when this happened and this is how it applies to you right there's a difference there there's a difference of like i'm talking at you to i'm talking to you and i'm having a conversation with you i'm having a discussion about this and i think because like i believe that it will help you in your life and that's where that genuine connection comes in and so that's where it comes in with like all of our relationships with all of our callings, right? It's important to have a genuine connection and you're not gonna have one with every single person. I'm not saying that, but like as we strive to have genuine conversations with the people that we serve or the people that we serve with in callings, in ministering, in whatever, like even if we're not 
like the perfect Relief Society president. People know that we care, right? We're not the perfect ministering sister. We don't hit them every single month, but we check in when we hear that something happened or we have a genuine conversation at church every week. Like I don't visit them every month, but I know that they care. I know that if I called them, they would come. And obviously in relationships, it's very obvious. Like you have to have a genuine relationship with your husband or your child or your best friend. Um, But even having genuine relationships at work currently, I am in a job where I live with like half of my coworkers. We are at a job out of town and we've been living out here. Like we moved out here, my husband and I moved out here. So we've been here for the whole time. But then we have people come kind of in groups for a month or two at a time and they we all stay in the same house that the company is renting. So we have our own room and our own bathroom, but then we share the house with the rest of them. And it was a very much a, like, um getting used to (laughs) but it's been really fun because i get to know them outside of work like we watch movies together we watch hockey games together we go to baseball games together so we like have that genuine relationship outside of work and so i would consider a lot of my coworkers really really good friends and that changes the way that work goes it's not just oh there's my coworker. hi it's good to see you again do your work make sure you're whatever but like i can sit down and i can be like hey you know, are you having a bad day? I, I noticed that you're not like your usual self. Are you okay? Is there something that I can do to help make your day better? Like that changes the way that my work environment is. <laughs> and that changes even like, um, so I work in construction, the, there's two superintendents um, who are the general contractor superintendents. And so they're like in charge of, you know, the whole project. And, um, we've been here about eight months and in that eight months, I've have a sort of relationship with them, right? Because I go in and I ask questions and we talk about the project, but then we also like, they ask how my vacation was and they tell me stories about their past projects and about their kids. And so like, I know them more than just, oh, they're my superintendents. They're my whatever, right? They're not my, they're my supervisor. Um, and it can be a little bit easier to like, I understand, like, I'm going to cut them a bit of slack because, um, I know that they're not like, that this is just that they're stressed, like, right. They're giving us a hard time because they're getting pressure from their higher ups and it's not really on us. Um, so it's really important. (laughs) That's my whole thing. That's my whole, my whole spiel. The how is very individual, right? And so that's my question. This is my question is because it's so personal, how can you build strong relationships with those in your lives? Um, There's going to be tips and tricks. You can find relationship advice anywhere, right? I'm not going to give you relationship advice, but like, how can you do that? How can you have strong relationships and build strong relationships with your spouse, with your children, with the people that you serve in your callings, with people that you work with, um, with people you meet at the supermarket. I don't know, right? But how can you do How can you build strong relationships? Um, Because I think it's really important. It's, It's a part of the reason why we're here, right? We are not here alone on a planet by ourselves, right? We are meant to, to be influenced by other people and influence other people. Uh, we're put in people's lives for a reason. People are put in our lives for a reason. I really genuinely believe that. So um, that was my question for you today. And that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Um, this is one of my longer episodes that I've done lately. Um, they've been all a bit shorter. Um, but this one, I think was really important to to have long and to have a bit more context to to it. So I would love to hear your thoughts about it as well. So drop a comment here or over on Facebook or Instagram, or you can message me, email me, all of that jazz. I'd love to hear your thoughts and start a conversation with you. So I will talk to you next time.